about Leoclius, an open source library to simplify applying machine learning to genomics data. In today's talk, I'll first go over what machine learning is and a popular machine learning framework called TensorFlow. Then I will talk about genomics, what it is and why do we care. The main focus for my talk will be Nucleus and how Nucleus brings sorry, how Nucleus brings TensorFlow and genomics together to solve interesting problems. Machine learning is the science of making computers act without being explicitly programmed. A subfield of machine learning is called deep learning. Uh, it is not a new concept, but it's getting a lot of attention these days. It's a modern reincarnation of artificial neural networks, which has been around for quite some time. So deep learning consists of these layers of mathematic trainable units uh, that, uh, that are also called, called neurons that were loosely inspired by the brain. Deep learning can learn features from very noisy data, and its power has been applied to many different problems. A classic example is uh, shown here to assign a label to a picture. Here you can see a cat picture. And through these layers of mathematical trainable units, the system can learn to tell that this is a cat. To formulate a machine learning uh, uh, problem of this type, we need a lot of labeled data. Uh, later in this talk, I will talk about why genomics is well suited to apply machine learning. And first, let's take a look at TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is the most uh, popular machine learning framework right now on GitHub. And it is uh, originally a project at Google Brain. It is uh, released in 2015, and since its first release, it has gathered a lot of support uh, from the community and is widely used. TensorFlow can be can work in different computing environments, and its main API is in Python. TensorFlow makes it really easy to write and train your model, so you do not need to be a machine learning expert to start using some of these models and making, uh, make them do cool things. So what is genomics? The human genome can be basically thought as this very long string, and it is uh, three billion letters long. This string uses a four-letter alphabet, A, C, G, and T. Your genome encodes a lot of information about you. So it, it is also thought as the blueprint of life. In every cell of your body, you have two copies of the genome, one from each parent. Genomics, on the other hand, refers to the study of the function and the structure of genomes. So in this picture here, you can see a piece of DNA illustrated in as this very long string of uh, A, C, G, and Ts. There are a couple of things that we know about uh, DNA. So there are these uh, functional elements, uh, like the genes here. And we also can measure what genes are active in each cell. This is called gene expression. There are other interesting features, such as the regulatory elements and DNA variants. There are many interesting problems in genomics. This ranges from data generation, genome annotation, to variant calling. So on the data generation side, can we take the output of these physical measurements to get an accurate DNA reading? Can we reduce the noise in these experiments that quantify uh, the measurements? On the genome annotation side, can we take this DNA sequence and interpret the uh, places where these functional elements like the genes are, or predict how active they are in different cell types? On the variant calling side, can we uh, identify the places individuals vary according to a reference, and how is this different for small variants versus large variants? And how do these changes of influence traits? And what about uh, cancer-specific variants? These are all very interesting problems. However, they are also uh, very computationally and algorithmically challenging. 
One thing that is really exciting for us is that there are many opportunities for deep learning in genomics. So previously, you've seen that to formulate a deep learning problem, you need a lot of data. And genomics is perfect for this because uh, as this, uh, in this plot shown here, you can see over the last decade, the cost for gene, uh, sequencing a genome reduced drastically over the past decade. So now we have a lot of these data sets. They are very large and they are very complicated. However, they may display uh, convolutional structures so we can use techniques from computer vision and natural language processing. There have been a number of proven successes of applying deep learning in genomics. So the variant, as you've seen here, is one such example. It is a tool that our group developed to uh, identify small variants in the population using uh, convolutional neural networks. Our goal in genomics is multifaceted. First, we want to make TensorFlow great for uh, genomics, and we do so by developing libraries to make it easy to work with genomics data. We are also interested in using some of these deep learning uh, based tools and push the boundaries on some of these scientific questions. Lastly, we want to make all of these public available and be used by the community. Let's take a look at why bringing genomics data to machine learning is challenging. One major difficulty is that there are many different file formats. Uh, this table here shows a subset of these file formats. And these formats have various amount of support and they have no uniform APIs. There are also concerns on the efficiency and language support. In particular, we want to combine uh, the expressiveness of Python with the efficiency of C++. To address these challenges, we developed Nucleus, a C++ and Python library. It is first released last year, and it has a fully open license. Nucleus handles the data conversion and integrates the da genomics data into TensorFlow so you can focus on solving the real challenging problems using machine learning rather than parsing the data formats. We, the way we develop Nucleus is to use uh, protocol buffers under the hood. Protocol buffers take care of serialization and deserialization so, you do not, uh, so the data works across language boundaries. We then use HTSLib, a canonical parser for high throughput sequencing data. We use Cliff on top of this to make the Python layers communicate with the C++ layers. We also use TensorFlow uh, uh, core libraries to write out genomics data in TF record format so the genomics data can be ingested by T TensorFlow APIs. And the currently supported data types are listed here. This ranges from geno general genome annotation to sequencing reads, whether they are directly from the sequencers or mapped to genetic variants. Uh, so Leucleus uh, can be installed by P uh, package manager. And this video here shows you how easy it is to install Leucleus. And Everything should run very smoothly, and uh, last time I tried it, it runs under one minute. And let's carry on. Uh, so this code snippet shows you how you can use Nucleus to use to read three different uh, data formats. So here you can see the reference reads, the mapped reads, and the VCF uh, variance data. And the reader APIs have uh, provide a uniform access across different types of genomics data formats. And this API supports iteration and query. So you can say things like, fetch me all the re reads from a certain region of the genome, look up the reference, and also see if uh, the reads overlap with any variants. Here's the writer API. We support uh, standard genomics data formats as well as uh, TF records. Uh, which are the TensorFlow specific formats. Uh, so it shows here TF record writer from the genomics writer module. 
So Leoclius has many example tutorials bundled in its uh, uh, GitHub repo, and you can find them under the examples directory. Today, I will go through one such example. The example is uh, called using Leoclius and TensorFlow for DNA sequencing error correction. This tutorial runs in an interactive notebook directly in your browser, and you do not need to install any software. Let me quickly go through the context for this tutorial. So in the 2000s, the next generation sequencing technologies arrived. This technology drastically reduced the cost to sequence a genome. However, these technologies, uh, technologies produces a uh, reading of the genome in chunks of roughly 100 basis long. And there are about 1 billion of these chunks. This is a great starting ground to apply deep learning because we have a lot of raw data. And here you can see uh, there are three uh, examples of these chunks, read one, two, three. And the red letters in them are the errors uh, produced by the sequencers. So depending on what sequencers you use, the rate at which this error can occur can be anywhere from 0.1% to 10%. So our goal for this tutorial is given a bunch of these reads, construct a neural network, and correct the errors in these reads, and produce reads without those errors. Correcting errors in next generation sequencing reads is an open research problem. Here we'll make a few assumptions to simplify the problem. To solve this using deep learning, we need three things. First, we need to extract features from the input data. We need the ground truth data to construct the labels. And we need a machine learning model that learns from the data. Here, we'll illustrate how we can use Leoclius and TensorFlow together to accomplish those goals. Uh, specifically, we will use Leoclius to parse data from the genomics data formats, construct features and labels, and then use TensorFlow to, to specify a deep learning model that will give us the corrected uh, basis. Here's a le uh, the network architecture that we'll use. So we use two convolutional layers followed by two fully connected layers. Uh, please ignore the details if you are not familiar with the terminologies. We are reusing an architecture that's, that is fairly standard. In general, you can take architectures that have been proven successful and repurpose them to your problem. We are using convolutional layers um, Convolutional layers are commonly used in image classification problem because we can uh, take DNA reads and treat them as pictures. And these convolutional filters work as uh, motive detectors to identify patterns in these reads. So writing this in code is fairly straightforward. We use uh, TF layers. So TF layers is a Python API uh, that, ex that TensorFlow exposes for easy composition of such models. This code snippet only shows the first TF layer and its max pooling layer. The rest can be found in the tutorial itself. We use an approach called consensus-based error correction. So instead of looking at each read individually, we pile them up along a reference read. In order to correct an error, we take we just simply combine all the information present in those reads and the reference genome. To encode this, infor uh, to encode this information in TensorFlow, we use the concept of a tensor. So a tensor is a concept that generalizes matrices and vectors to include higher dimension arrays. And TensorFlow operates on this data type. So here we turn that pile up image that you've seen on the previous slide into a matrix of normalized base counts. The neural network will uh, work on this uh, input and output of distribution over uh, all bases. If we think the, or if we consider there's an error at position seven, the neural network will output 
the prediction for how likely it is an A, C, G, or T. And in this particular case, because G has the highest score, we take it as the predictor base. So for a given read, how do we know there's an error and what do we use as the ground truth? We can use reference genome. So reference genome can be thought as a reference book for genomes. It is developed by research institutions so in the absence of errors, the reading of a genome should be the same as a reference genome, except at these positions where uh, we know there are DNA variants. So here, uh, we are, to simplify the problem, we are only considering substitution errors and ignoring compli more complicated errors, such as insertions and deletions. And uh, here, this example shows one substitution error, T. And when we look it up using nucleus reader uh, in the reference genome, we know that at the same position, there should be a C. Because this T doesn't overlap with known DNA variants, we know that it is a sequencing error. Reads that satisfy these conditions are used as inputs to the model, and the ground truth is used as the label. So writing this code looks like this. First, we'll use the readers to read the form, uh, data out of the genomics data formats. And ca you call this function make example to construct a TensorFlow example. The t make example will contain information necessary to construct a tensor, but the data code snippet is not shown here. Once we have our example, we are ready to write out to a file path on disk. And here we use the nucleus TF record writer. So now we have our input data, we have our model, we are ready to make them work together. So we use TensorFlow's estimator API. TensorFlow Estimator API is a high-level API that has a lot of functionalities already built in. So you only need to specify things like the model on the first line here and how to get the input data. Let's see how this runs in the interactive notebook provided. So within a few thousand steps, you should be able to see the accuracy improves uh, and the model gets better and better. And finally, you will see a, a accuracy of 99%. So the video is uh, edited and sped up. Uh, and if you run this in the notebook provided, it should finish around 10 minutes. Okay. So that was a really fast overview of what Lucas can do. And if you're interested, I encourage you to try out this uh, tutorial and feel free to change any code in that tutorial and see how it affects the output. To summarize, last slide. Nucleus is this C++ and Python library that manipulates genomics data and integrates them into TensorFlow. It is the foundation for a deep variant, a state of art variant caller that our group has developed. So what's next? We're adding support to more file formats. We are releasing Python 3 version of the PIP package. Because genomics data files are massive, so speed really matters here. And we are continuing working on the performance of the library. Pull requests and community participation are most welcome. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention today. And I will now take questions. Thank you so much. Uh, where can we find some interesting genomic data sets? Um, that's a very good question. So there are uh, public data sets that are released by these research institutes. So in America, there's a National Institute of Health. And in the UK, there's an effort called UK Biobank. And that's, uh, that does this longitudinal studies uh, for um, a population, and uh, if you uh, submit that application, you can get access to the data. 
What do you use nucleus for in practice? Yes, so deep variant is a good example. So deep variant um, is the tool that identify variants in, uh, in, like for instance, in my genome uh, versus a reference genome. And because next uh, generation sequencing technologies produces reading of the genome in a very noisy way, and you have to uh, reconstruct them. So identify variants is not a trivial task. And the variant is, uh, we published this in Nature Biotech uh, last year, and its source code is fully open source on GitHub as well. How do you distinguish between read errors and genetic variations? Yes, that's a very good question. So in this particular example, because we'll uh, make a lot of assumptions, uh, for instance, we know where the uh, DNA variants are, so we know uh, where the errors are. But in reality, it's not so clear. Uh, and the, right now, uh, there are many variant color, like GATK, uh, and the variant can make these uh, mistakes. So it can be an artifact, for instance, of the sequencing error, or it can be an artifact of the sample, like if it's a saliva sample, it, it might contain other uh, genetic uh, uh, see evidence from other uh, from your friend or from like from your food. So it's not so clear uh, in reality. Why is there no support for uh, writing in FASTA format? Like it's the easiest format to write. Uh, yes, the FASTA format is the reference genome format. So here um, in one of the slides, we see uh, the FASTA reader over here, the FASTA reader. And that is to read uh, data from the reference genome. And reference genome is usually published uh, using the FASTA format. Yes, that's a great question. What are the biggest challenges in genomics now or in the near future? Uh, yes, so as sequencing technologies get, get very, a lot, uh, more accuracy, um, get better in um, the accuracy of uh, the reading of the genome, but it's unclear uh, on the potential of these technologies. So right now we use the um, human genome, and there's effort to use it on, like for instance, uh, ag agriculture species species. There was a recent paper published in Nature that uh, they've done whole genome-wide association studies on barley strains, and they discovered interesting facts about human selection and crop evolution. So there's a lot of potential in this field, and I encourage you to learn more and uh, contribute. Did the use of nucleus lead to interesting findings in research? Any examples you can share? Uh, yes, the variant is one example. But again, we are working on a few more projects, and uh, hopefully you will see them soon. And our goal is to publish papers, so uh, yes. What are the advantages of Nucleus when compared to other parsing libraries like PySAM? Great question. So uh, PySAM is the tool that's also Python-based, and it also uses HTSLib, or canonical parser for high-throughput sequencing data. Our differentiator is that um, we make it really easy to manipulate this genomics data using a uniform API, and we have a more seamless uh, integration into TensorFlow. So our goal is to for genomics researchers and machine learning uh, practitioners to get into genomics data and try to come up with interesting uh, solutions. There's a question about uh, showing uh, uh, one of the slides. If any of you want to see any of the slides, this thing is being streamlined on YouTube, so you can just go ahead uh, in that video and, and, and search back. Can you only correct substitution errors in reads or also in indels? Yes, so indel is a term that's short for substitutions and deletions. So in our example, because uh, we want to have a very short tutorial, we are only considering substitution errors and not insertions and deletions, which is also called indels. What is the definition of a read error? How can you identify one? So read errors are coming from the sequencers. Uh, the way you uh, traditionally identify 
Uh, that means you have reads that overlap in, in regions. So if you combine, pile up uh, several reads, most of the reads will be correct, except some of the reads will contain some errors. So we use a consensus-based error correction in the hope that this machine learning model will uh, identify the pattern of this consensus that's present in the pile up of reads. Okay, now the questions are getting a little more hardcore. Is, is nucleus architecture affected by vanishing gradient? Does it support recurrent neural networks? Uh, about half of the eyes will be going like what? Okay, so but nucleus. Perhaps you can answer that for the person who asked. Yeah. So nucleus doesn't uh, doesn't uh, deal with architectures. Nucleus. Uh, the goal for nucleus to, is to make. Uh, it's easy to use genomics data in machine learning framework. So you can use TensorFlow to specify whether you want uh, recurrent neural networks or convolutional neural networks. That's up to you. Does Google store or use the data inputs? No, no, it's all open sourced, so you can run locally on your computer. Where did you get the positions of reads in the reference genome? In other words, your techniques cannot, technicians cannot, or techniques cannot apply in the novo assembly? Uh, yes, that's correct. So here we are assuming we have, uh, we need one extra step, that is to map this uh, read to the reference genome. That's called the alignment step. And uh, yes, so it has some limitations here. Will they implement Nucleus in the future in an R language project? Uh, that's a very good question. So uh, for projects uh, in Google Brain Genomics team, uh, that's where I'm from, and we decided Python is the language that we really like and w would like to use in our analysis, and we want to focus on developing capabilities for Python. Asking as a noob, does Nucleus allow for outlier detection in the genome sequence? Uh, yes, that's a very good question. So Nucleus doesn't deal with the machine learning model part. It deals with the data conversion and integrates them into the machine learning model that you are trying to build. So if you are want to do more outlier uh, classification or identification, you can definitely do that with Nucleus. And the very last one, what are some other applications of Nucleus other than sequencing error correction? Oh, yes, that's a very good question, too. So in the examples directory that I mentioned uh, previously, you can find a couple of other uh, examples of how, use, how to use Nucleus. Thank you so much, Helen. Okay, thanks.